Interviews of the four candidates who have been shortlisted for the Chief Justice position will start today. The incoming incumbent will replace former Chief Justice Mohueng Mohueng, whose term ended in October last year. The four judges are Gauteng High Court Division Judge President Dunstan Mlambo, Supreme Court of Appeal President Mandisa Maya, Acting Chief Justice Raymond Zondo, and Justice Mboyeseli Madlanga. Lawyer, research and advocacy officer Mbekizeli Benjamin from the Judges Matter campaign and Chris Oxtoby, a senior researcher from the Democratic Governance and Rights Unit at the University of Cape Town, join us. Gentlemen, great to have you. Thanks so much for being our guests. Good morning, morning Ian, and good morning to the viewers. All right, Mbekizeli, let me begin with you. Let's, let's just talk to the process. It's, it's really taken a long time to get here. Um, many would say unnecessarily long time. I mean, we've been sitting without a, uh, a, a full-time Chief Justice in a position, in a chair that's been vacant for a while and just had the acting Chief Justice, which is Raymond Zondo, in that position. Why, is, why the delay? What happened? Well, um, it's difficult to, to pinpoint one uh, a contributing factor to the delay, but I think the biggest one is has been from the presidency. Um, they waited far too long for them to kickstart the process. Um, in, we thought they would start at the beginning of the year, um, considering that this was supposed to be, uh, well, considering that we knew that uh, Chief Justice Mukhoeng would retire on the 11th of October, 2021. So they should have already kicked off the process at the beginning of the year and, and made sure that these constitutionally required consultations are done uh, as quickly as possible so that by the time that Chief Justice Mohang retires, we would all know who the successor. So that that was the, the biggest contributing factor in, in our view. But again, this process was, was absolutely necessary. Mm. Um, we sit here today uh, with four really, really good judges. And we are actually spoiled for choice because all of them are, have excellent track records. All of them are, are ready uh, to be Chief Justice. And the debate is really now on, on who amongst these good uh, judges should be Chief Justice. And, and that's a credit to this process. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Chris, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you come into, into this as well. If there's anything you'd like to add in terms of the delay of the process and, and perhaps also touch on what are we looking for in a Chief Justice? What, what are those qualities we're looking for? Thanks. Yeah, I, I wouldn't add anything to, to what Mbeke Zeli um, has said about the delay. I think that's, that's absolutely... Uh, correct, and it is it is um, unfortunate that the process wasn't started sooner because it wasn't as if the uh, retirement of the outgoing Chief Justice was a surprise. We knew when that was going to happen, um, and it's it's quite unprecedented for us to have had this gap uh, between the tenure of a previous Chief Justice ending and a new one being appointed. In terms of what uh, we're looking for, I mean that that's a really fundamental question, um, and the role of the Chief Justice has changed quite significantly. Um, over the years, if one thinks back to the, the pre-constitutional era, uh, the Chief Justice was uh, were considered first among equals. Um, they would have fairly uh, limited sort of powers and control over the, over the judicial institution. That's changed a lot over the last decade or so. so the Chief Justice now has uh, considerable administrative responsibilities, considerable formal uh, leadership responsibilities um, in the judiciary. So we're really looking for a, a, a quite unique uh, sort of blend of qualities between, on the one hand, uh, a chief justice who is a, a, a visionary and a leading, a leading jurist who writes groundbreaking judgments and is an intellectual leader for the judiciary, versus somebody who is also capable of uh, dealing with the uh, quite significant administrative uh, needs and challenges of running the judiciary, judiciary well. Um, and there, there, there's many subcomponents of, of those, but I would say those are probably the two, the two big themes that one would be looking for. Mm -hmm. I would just add that, I mean, one of the challenges in answering that question is we're not, we're not really sure what the Judicial Service Commission thinks uh, it's looking for and is important um, in this process. Um, and that's, that's one of our longstanding uh, difficulties with, uh, with how the, the JSC operates, um, is that it would be very beneficial if they articulated um, some criteria that they will be applying this week. 
Yeah. Um, so we will we will have to wait and see how that plays out in the interviews. Is I mean, is that concerning? I mean, Becky Zelli, let me come to you. I mean, the fact that we don't even have um, a set list of criteria available that we can look to and, and work towards and, and perhaps get a greater understanding of, you know, what they are looking for. Is that of concern to you, that there is no kind of document or list of criteria that we know of? Yes, it, it is extremely concerning, um, not only because we don't really know what we are looking for from the, the, the candidates that would be put forward, um, but the, the other uh, benefits of a criteria is that it guides the kind of questions and the kinds of issues that are put to the, to the candidates. So, for example, if there was a, a clear set of criteria, the, the chairperson of the meeting could easily overrule a question that is out of line, that strays into uh, issues that are irrelevant to the interview. You'll remember that um, last year, in fact, the interviews for April uh, um, for the Constitutional Court had to be redone simply because the issues that were uh, debated and the questions that were asked of the candidates had nothing to do with their ability to 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 uh, do well as judges, but really they were dealing with political issues that um, were irrelevant to, to to their job. And so the the purpose of a criteria would be would be it would would work to focus the minds of the commissioners and make sure that the chairperson is able to enforce uh, the rules of 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 the JSC and make sure that they focus on this important task of of deciding who the next leader of the judiciary will be. Yeah, let's get into the candidates now because. Um... Uh, today we're going to be see ju uh, we're going to see uh, Justice Mbuyiseli Madlanga, and no doubt, and I, I imagine that each candidate will take the better part of a day. I mean, that's we've been given from the first to the fourth to interview the candidates. So let's let's have a look at our first candidate. So um, uh, I'll come to you, Chris. Let's let's have a look and see what your your views are on our very first candidate we'll see today. Uh, yeah, sure. So, so Justice Madlanga is a very experienced uh, judge uh, of the Constitutional Court. He's been a judge of the Constitutional Court since uh, 2013. Um, and I think it would be fair to say that he's regarded as one of the, the intellectual leaders of that court. Uh, he's written a large number of uh, very important and uh, significant judgments. Um, so I think he's, uh, he's, he's very clearly got a strong um, a strong set of uh, a set of skills and qualities in in that respect. He's a little bit more of an unknown um, unknown quality as far as the more administrative side is, in that he's not held uh, many formal leadership positions within the judiciary. Although, of course, they you know there may be uh, unseen um, unseen things that are, that are going on uh, in a less official way uh, in the background. But I, I would I would say to uh, to sum him up, uh, we're looking at a very uh, very credible and a very strong jurist who has got a, a, a proven track record of writing very significant and uh, and groundbreaking judgments. So, so what we know about um, Justice Mboyiseli Madlanga, that he is already serving at the Constitutional Court, same as, as Chief Justice Raymond Zondo, but um, their terms are about to end. Um, that's uh, Zondo in 2024 and uh, uh, Madlanga in 2025. Does this disadvantage them in any way? Um, or, or, or would the institutional memory work in their favour? Well, I think um, the institutional memory is, is an important one because the constitutional court is a unique court. It has its own practices, its own traditions, and its way of doing things. It's a very collegial court. Um, the judges are all equal. Um, they all have a, a view, an independent view of each other. So collegiality is the clue that binds them together. And if you have someone who's familiar with the internal systems, who's familiar with the people, and who's able to bring uh, all these different minds to, together, that's an important factor that we, we cannot really discount. Even the, the, the general counsel of the bar, which represents practicing advocates, have highlighted that as an important factor. And they've looked at, at Judge, Justice Madlanga's uh, uh, track record, and they've actually noted that of the about 50 or so judgments that he's written in the last couple of years, most of them have been with the full agreement with all the colleagues on the court. So that's an important quality that we, we, we cannot really discount. Mm -hmm. But 
Um, again, the, the timing is, is an important thing because, as Chris mentioned earlier, the role of the Chief Justice is beyond the Constitutional Court, and, and he has to deal with a, a lot of administrative issues, and he needs to have a vision that he will implement in a relatively short space of time. Three years might not be sufficient for him mm. to uh, implement that vision, but again, three years is, is still a, a good chunk of time in which to do a lot of good work. Um, the same goes for, for Justice Zondo. Um, he's acting in the position at the moment, mm. so he's familiar with the job. And within the two years, he can do um, a, 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 a decent job. But of course, a longer term for a chief justice works much better than a shorter term. Certainly. And I mean, to go through this whole process again in you know two or three years' time, it, I, I imagine that, that that's a, it's a very cumbersome process to have to go through. So you know, we'd have to see if that, that would work in their favor or not. I want to focus on, on um, uh, well, acting Chief Justice Raymond Zondo at the moment. Working on the state capture inquiry, I mean, we're seeing the next uh, part of it being released today. The first part was released. The last one will be uh, at the end of February. I, I, I suppose a tough question. Does working or did working on the state capture inquiry work in his favour or against him? Chris? I'd I guess we'll find we'll find that out in the next uh, in the next week or so. Um, I, do, I do think it's a major factor that is at play with his candidacy, and um, even when he was initially appointed to to chair the commission, some eyebrows were raised about taking a sitting judge who might even back then we thought he might well be uh, in line to, to 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 be the next chief justice, and the the implications of of sitting on a commission of that nature. Uh, you know, were, were a question mark back then. I, I don't know exactly what the political calculation from the president is ultimately going to be, but I'm sure this is going to be a factor that is, uh, that is coming into the equation as to whether or not uh, the, all the issues that the, the state capture inquiry raises, um, whether, they, whether they make uh, the deputy chief justice somebody who is uh, perhaps, for want of a better word, uh, too, too politically contentious to put in that role. I think that will be a consideration. I'm not saying that he would he would definitely be disqualified on that ground, but I think that is definitely going to play a role. Mm -hmm. And it may well also play a role in the interviews uh, this week. It'll be very interesting to see what kind of questions relating to his role there are going to come up from commissioners. Um, and again, this is going to come back to the criteria point where it's going to be so important that the, the interview is chaired and the questions are asked yeah. in a way that, that stays on topics that are relevant to his uh, potential as a chief justice and doesn't become a referendum of his chairing of the, the committee. I the mean, a, a, sorry. And Chris, you've been through this process. I mean, you've, you've, you've been through the process in the past. So you, this is something very, very familiar to you. I, I'm, I'm running into time constraints and we've still got two to speak about. So I want to quickly just go through our last two candidates. And that, of course, is um, um, the uh, Supreme Court of Appeal President, Mandisa Maya, um, been heading the SEA since 2017. Now, this is uh, the possibly the, the, the first female Chief Justice we may have. I mean, she has had uh, many firsts in her pedigree. She was in uh, the, one of the first batch of women judges in the Eastern Cape High Court, the first black woman at the SCA, first deputy president, and now the first president of the SCA. I mean, this is a wonderful track record and, you know, could very well see her being our first female Chief Justice. So um, perhaps, Becky Zelli, you'd like to take this one. Yeah, it, it would really be a momentous occasion for her to be appointed. Um, we are a woman majority country, so it makes sense that our chief justice should be a woman. But also there's a constitutional requirement that the uh, 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 judiciary reflects broadly the racial and gender composition of the country. And our country is made up mostly of women, of black women. So a, a, a black woman chief justice makes sense. But the other factors of, of uh, that that make uh, Justice Maya a an excellent candidate is that she has led the judiciary, well, the Supreme Court of Appeal. Excellently, the, that court performs at such a high level that it exceeded its target last year. We heard from the report, and it was one of the first to actually go online when the pandemic started. So. Uh, those kinds of factors, I think they far eclipse uh, the fact that she also happens to be a, a woman. So 
that's something to look forward to in the interview Indeed. as well. Indeed. So we've hit seven o'clock, but we've got one last candidate to look at. And that, of course, is Mlambo. Now, Justice Mlambo, this is a, also Dunstan Mlambo, the, uh, the uh, Gauteng High Court Division's um, uh, um, judge president there. He served for 24 years as a judge from the SCA before coming to the Gauteng High Court. He must be also a very strong contender. I mean, we've got great contenders for this position, which goes without say. But individually and having a look at him, where do you think he sits in all of this, Chris? I think he's a very strong contender. Um, the, the fact that he's not a current judge of the Constitutional Court might make him look like an outsider. But um, as you allude to, he's got a proven track record as a leader of um, the busiest courts uh, in the country. Um, seems highly respected uh, by his by his peers in the judiciary, um, and has uh, has experience of uh, of being an, an appellate court judge. So I think he's a he's a well rounded and and very serious uh, uh, contender in this mm. process for sure. All right. We leave it there. Thank you so, so much. Well, this is the process. I know that we're going to have a lot more conversations as these interviews carry on. So first of Feb, first up at 10 o'clock this morning is the first interview. And uh, our analysts there, of course, Chris Ox, uh, Oxterby, who is a senior researcher from the Democratic Governance and Rights Unit at the University of Cape Town and research and advocacy officer Becky Zelli Benjamin from the Judges Matter campaign. So that's where we leave it. Thanks again, gentlemen, for your time.